We're getting closer and closer to the NFL draft, and we got closer and closer to some solutions for this team. I'll tell you what they are in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. You are Locked on Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up? Thank you for joining me, Tony Wiggins, the host of the Locked On Jaguars podcast. We're at your team every day, and we thank you for making us your first listen. I got to let you know that we're free to subscribe to over on our YouTube page. Make sure you go over there, tap in, hit the subscribe button and the like button. So you got to hit that bell too, by, by the way, so you get notifications each and every time we drop an episode. Also, wherever you listen to your audio podcast, make sure wherever that is you tap in every single day so you don't miss an episode today's show is brought to you by game time download the game time app create an account and use the code locked on for twenty dollars off your first purchase shout out to the everydayers for joining us here every single day you can be one all you got to do is join us every single day and make sure you let me know when you see me in public that you're an everyday all right so here's the thing we're trying to go through what we think the Jaguars might do cover all the bases just so you know uh that you know the Jaguars have plenty of options right we will cover all of these bases so it gives you an idea of what could possibly happen and why they could possibly do it this is not about us trying to be right this is not about us trying to have something uh where you know we throw a bunch of darts and then we can pull them out and say we we were right but what, what it is is it gives you an idea of the process and lets you know that there's more than one way to skin a cat and we're going to look at all of those po- not and by the way i am not really that's a figure of speech i have no peter i am so i have no inclination whatsoever to be skinning no animals all right except chicken because I, I will eat me some chicken but you know what i mean um that's just a figure of speech there's more one way more than one way to get something done all right so we're going to look at it today. Uh, I think offensive line should still be in play, uh, especially if there's this other thing that they're thinking about, right? And that other thing might be some of the money that they have to free up to extend certain people, like Trevor Lawrence, like Tyson Campbell, like Andre Sisco. You got to start thinking ahead a little bit. I don't know if it'll have any effect this year, like if they – Cam Robinson. Cam Robinson is the big uh, the big thing I want to discuss here because I don't know if they are going to move Cam, but if they move Cam, they'll save a bunch of money. I think somebody says it's like $16 million this year, especially if it's a June 1st designation. So I don't know if that gets in the way of an extension because an extension is just that. It's money added on to after this current season with guys like Cisco and with guys like Campbell and, of course, with Trevor Lawrence. So I don't know if the number changes this year or if those numbers change. But when I say get ahead of it, what I mean by getting ahead of it is don't go into next season not understanding or not knowing what you want to do. There's no rush to do it. You can do it now. But what if you look up in this draft and a really, really good player is there at 17 and he's an offensive lineman? And then you tell yourself, we can start saving money now. If we move Anton Harrison to left tackle, right? And we take a young right tackle that we believe can play day one, just like Harrison did. Now we have two bookends. And this is the word that I want to hang on today. We have two young bookends on rookie deals drafted in the first round with fifth year options. So that's four more years with Harrison and five more years with the new guy. And it could be a number of players. It could be Fuaga from Oregon State. It could be Amarius Mims from Georgia. Now you start thinking we're young on the offensive line. Now you you start getting this idea we're young at those two critical critical positions and we're good. You got to be young somewhere and get production because there's no way you're going to start extending people. And I'm not and I'm looking beyond just 2024, but I'm also trying to help you doing in 2024 because 2024 what it would be was it would be it would be the year that those guys started to gel, right? And you know 
you have those bookends for the next four or five years. If you if you're that if you evaluate this thing correctly and you go, I'm that certain that that guy can play. I think you pull the trigger and you address the other needs elsewhere. And here's why I think you pull the trigger. I think you pull the trigger because it allows you to have that flexibility. It allows you to have more cash, even if you have to start loading things up for people this year, turning things into a bonus and giving them extra money. It also gets rid of something else that you'll have to do next year. Maybe a guy next year that you want to plug in the right tackle. Maybe he's not good enough. I promise you if Walker Little was good enough, they do it right now. They do it right now. You got to think they've done they've done too many things that let you know. And that's one thing that folks don't understand about moves, whether it be free agency or in the draft. You always wonder what they feel about a player. And, and I've heard this debate like, well, instead of being sunshine and rainbows about every player, why, why, why aren't more people that do this for a living? Why aren't they more honest? Because the teams aren't. And just because, and this is very important for you guys to, to know, for all of us to know, just because the Jaguars have done things that let you know how they feel or don't feel about Walker Little doesn't mean they don't like him. And I want to just remind everyone that the way folks do this is they always look for pluses. They look for the way guys can help them. As long as they're not realistic and saying, well, he can do this and he can do that when he when they know he can't, they will always look at what a guy can do. Everybody's not going to be a star. Everybody's not going to be polished. Everybody's not going to be 100 percent across the board ready to do the things that are needed to be done. So they always look for the positives. What can he do? Can he help us on a limited basis? Can he do this? Can he do, can he get us from one? Can he get us from here to there when we're in this package? And can he hold the fort against that guy? Give an honest assessment of what he can do. Nobody sits around talking about what a dude can't do. They know what he can't do, and they don't put him in a position to do that. Therefore, I'm not saying that the Jaguars don't like Walker Little. What I am saying is, they know what he is and what he isn't in their minds, and they won't put him in a position to be something that he's not. And that's why they keep doing the things that they're doing, and that's why they still have Cam Robinson on this team. Cam Robinson ain't a bad player. It's just that Cam Robinson is always banged up. So the lack of availability would make you think that they would move on from it. But in this league, you can't do that. You ain't turning no 27, 28-year-old dude who started all of these games that 6'6", 330 pounds, Somebody swoop in. If you released him today, Cam Robinson will have 12 teams wanting him to come in and be a starter on their team. I'm just telling you, that's how it works in the NFL. So that means that value is established. It's hard to find guys that are competent to play in this NFL. Just think about it. How long is it taking the Jaguars to find a center or left guard? It's hard. It's difficult, man. It's not easy. And guys like that have value around the NFL. And you're not supposed to just take him, turn him and lose. He's a top 20 tackle in this league. You just don't turn him loose, man, because they are hard to find. And if they had somebody behind them that they thought was ready after being in the NFL for three years, they would probably go ahead and move on or try to trade him. But And then extend Walker Little to a long-term contract. And now you still have young bookends. I think right now the way it's trending that Walker Little is going to play his contract out here in Jacksonville and then be on the road to finding somewhere else to go. Therefore, that means the Jaguars will be looking for another tackle next year. They've already indicated that Anton Harrison can play left tackle. So whoever they'll be going after would play the right tackle position. So when I say get ahead of it, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You don't know who's going to be there next year. You don't know if you're going to be a playoff team picking really, really late next year. You do know that this is a, a draft where there's four quarterbacks going probably in the first six picks. And that is knocking the board down for you in terms of guys that line up with uh, their talent and with the positions of need for this football team. So will they be forward thinking or will they address one of the things that you believe is a glaring hole right now, like tackle? I mean, I'm sorry, corner, uh, reserve edge. The Jaguars have some options. I wouldn't be mad if they addressed the offensive line because I am never angry when a team does that, especially if you feel like if they feel like they're going to get younger 
And by getting younger, what they end up doing is also is getting more healthy. And they have a guy on their team that isn't always banged up. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about why it's important that they start prepping for Trevor Lawrence, his extension, and um, some other players. And then I'm going to give you what I believe I, I touched it a little while ago. In segment three, we're going to talk, out, talk about the bookend theory. The bookend theory. Uh, I know it sounds like a, an album cover or an album title from Tribe Called Quest, but that's not what it is. I'll explain all of that to you in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robin Hood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robin Hood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robin Hood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to the ira their ira with the three percent match this offer is good through april 30th get started at robinhood.com slash boost the subscriptions fees apply and now for some legal info claim as of quarter one 2024 validated by radius global market research investing involves risk including loss Limitations applied, IRAs and 401ks, 3% match requires Robinhood gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker dealer. All right, second segment here on Locked on Jaguars, where it's your team every day, and we thank you for making us your first listen. It's obvious that Trevor Lawrence is going to be extended here in Jacksonville. He is going to be given uh, the franchise quarterback treatment around here. He may be the next guy to reset the market. I think him and Tua, or Pro Tua Tagovailoa in Miami, are probably the two guys that are up right now or uh, the teams are, are shaping up to be getting ready to probably extend them. At some point, the Jaguars then have to understand that they are going to, if they're going to continue to build a team around Trevor, one, they got to get guys that can play. Two, they really got to start hitting on more draft picks because that's how they're going to find uh, the talent that is able to blend in when you eventually have a quarterback that's making a lot of money. You can do that after you extend your quarterback and you can do that right as you're about to extend him and start finding guys in the draft at critical positions long term that enable you to be able to make sure that you spend the money somewhere else. If they if it's obvious to you that there's an offensive lineman that come 2020 can help you in 2024, but come 2025 will allow you to, to move things around and do things that you want to do and have a young offensive line and alleviate yourself of some of the high-priced older players on your roster. There's no better place to do it, in my opinion, than this year in the draft and just go ahead and get it going a year ahead of time. I would. And since Cam Robinson has 2020, uh, has uh, uh, January, uh, June 1st, in the, uh, if he has June 1st ramifications, in terms of uh, seeing what you know, what what you could save from either trading him or moving him to another team, if you're able to draft somebody, bring them into mini camp and bring them in and see them first, and see them first and for at, at first hand, can they play right tackle? First of all, you need to be sure that he can do it when you pick him, right? But then you get a, a little bit of a look see. You can then move Cam Robinson once you get your eyes on the kid. You can even move Cam Robinson to a team that maybe has an injury, therefore boosting up what your compensation will be for Cam Robinson. The key is to have two guys that can play. And I know there's other needs, and trust me, we'll, we'll get to that, all right? I think when you look at this draft, you can address corner, backup edge, interior defensive line if you need to and and wide receiver in the second third through a compensatory pick and in the fourth round 
maybe if you even move back a little bit, you can address all of those things still at the back end of the top 100. If not the top 100, the back end of maybe the top 120. I, I think it's very, very possible with the way that this draft lines up. That would mean what are we doing with that first pick? And this is why I want to explore taking an offensive lineman. First of all, a team is never, ever, 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 ever. You're never too good to take a, an offensive lineman in, in the first uh, round, especially if you have uh, multiple picks that are going, multiple players that are going to be free agents the following year. I'm not suggesting that uh, Taliesi Fuaga or whoever be taken uh, as a replacement for Cam Robinson. My replacement for Cam Robinson is already on the roster if that's the way that they decide to go, and that is Anton Harrison. And I have no doubt that Anton Harrison can be just as good as he was at right tackle. He can do that at left tackle. And if he's that, that means he's a better, he's an upgrade at left tackle over Cam Robinson. I really, really do believe that this is a real good hot spot for both a corner and an offensive lineman. I do, however, think that you can address corner later and edge later and get a player that's not as far behind as if you try to address the tackle position later on in the draft. If you try to address the tackle position later on in the draft, I do think that it's going to be a, a, a really, really big gap between the group of guys that are available to you at 17 and then, say, the group of players that are available to you uh, uh, later in the draft. Now. Something that we have to realize all the time is go back and look at past drafts. Everybody that's chosen in the first round hasn't turned out to be good. Everybody chosen in the second round have not chosen, uh, turned out to be good. So as much as you like all of these pros prospects in your top 64, more than half of them are going to be disappointments. And then you'll find there'll be guys later that end up being very good players. It's not about that. It's more about, can the Jaguars do the job to identify those guys? I think when it's easy, you have to take it. And, and that's what Trent has done a real good job in the first round, because to me, those, those picks are, are pretty much easy scouting. And he's done a really, really good job with that, whether we like it or not. I like all of the picks that they've made in the first round since he's been a general manager. Why not make another one at a critical position where it's plain as day that that spot is going to be able to help you out. It's important to me that they start doing this at some point and they start this practice, maybe even looking a year ahead and getting the process going, going now. What if this happens? What if they say they draft Taliesi Fuaga, right? And they do what I said and move and, and they get a third or fourth round pick for Cam Robinson. They move Anton Harrison to left tackle. Everybody stays healthy. They keep walking a little four years to swing tackle. And what if, just what if, they play lights out? What if they just absolutely play lights out? You see what I'm talking about? Just start imagining what that would mean for Trevor Lawrence. That means that there will be funds that will be allocated to other positions that could help strengthen this football team and make things easy for Trevor. Not so much as Trevor's money, because that's going to be, that's going to take care of itself. And he's going to get that regardless if you let go of Cam Robinson or not. But it allows the Jaguars to have the freedom and the flexibility to continue to shore up other areas, interior defensive line, maybe give more money to a, a veteran edge rusher who wants to uh, play for a contender but doesn't want to be cheap. You know, what doesn't want a team to be cheap with them. Well, we've seen that in the past. That It allows them to go out and get some corner depth, guys that are cut late and maybe they want a little bit of extra money. It allows you to spread the wealth a little bit more around because you have this production from a player that plays the same position as a certain player that you had that's now making $20 million. They did this a year earlier with Jawan Taylor. So I'm giving Trent credit. I think you have to start prepping for Trevor's extension, not because you need the money for Trevor, even though you do. I think you need the money for other players around Trevor, and you have to be able to supplement that some sort of way. And one of the ways to do it is to have two really, really good players over a long period of time at left and right tackle, that can really, really help you. Why is the bookend theory so important? I just gave you a little bit of it, but I'm going to give you some more of it here. And this is all about their identity. I'm going to give all of that to you in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. 
But first, I got to let you know about the Game Time app here on Locked on Jaguars. That's right. If you have procrastinated when it's time for you to buy some tickets, welcome to the club. All of us have done that. I waited to the last minute. Didn't know if I wanted to go. Didn't know if it'd be financially feasible. And once I found out, it was almost too late because the event was about to start. Well, guess what? That's no problem for Game Time because Game Time specializes in you come in late and needing to buy tickets for an event that have already started or about to start because you can get tickets absolutely at the last minute, even after the event has already started. Man, they got all kinds of stuff. You can see your seat and the view from your seat when you buy the tickets. You can get insurance on the tickets and you can find exclusive flash deals for any event whether it be a sporting event or not. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, all one word, for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Third and final segment here on Locked on Jaguars. Where it's your team every day. We always thank you for making us your first listen. We've got a second listen for you, man. It's real, real important. As you know, Locked on has launched the first ever national 24-7 sports streaming channel, Locked on Sports Today. Baseball fans, mark your calendars for March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern time for the best major league season preview coming exclusively on Locked On Sports today on March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Be the first to get local insight from the major league baseball local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network. Find it on March 20th, 7 p.m. on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Keep using this word bookends, and I'm going to tell you where I got the why that word is so important to me. Because normally, whenever you see teams that go on sustained runs and you see teams that go on uh, these long runs, there's just so many players that you can identify with um, that have been together for a long time. It does not necessarily have to be tackle to tackle. It could be like Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson, right? That is where you can get a lot of your continuity that you normally don't get if you're signing guys to two and three year contracts at skill positions like the Jaguars have been doing in free agency. One of the places you can outside a quarterback, one of the places that is is more sustainable and more likely for you to have two, three and sometimes even four guys that have played together for a long time happens to be the most critical position where guys need to have been playing together for a long time and that's the offensive line because the offensive line is the one unit that more than any other unit they have to be cohesive and they have to operate in unison and to get that chemistry down so that to me is the place where you should really really try your best to have a sense of uh, sustainability and long-term consistency and the way that you do that is by drafting those guys and developing those guys very well. And, and in this draft, that position on the offensive line, especially with the, the, the tackles, since the Jaguars have pretty much addressed their interior already, I really, really think that I don't want them to go into this season being one thing and then next year they got to start all over again, right? Can you – is it a such thing as doing it too early? Can you jettison Cam Robinson too early? Sure, you can, especially if you don't have an adequate replacement. I think you can get an adequate replacement here in the first round. It's like I said, your replacement for Cam is already on the team, and you know what he is. You slide him and move him over, and it's just one theory. And Go ahead in this draft, draft a guy at 17 that has the value of a guy at number 10 or 11, and now you get closer and closer to having – bookends and players that are going to provide the most cohesion and are going to provide the most uh consistency and you got them there for a longer period of time and they're under contract that's why it's so so important and that's why it intrigued me because teams ying when you think they're going to yang i'm sitting there looking at all the corners and i did a, I did a mock last week and and did a what if last week on the corners 
uh, whether they get another receiver with with Brandon Ayuk. I think they have their starters already. I think they I think they do. They like to be in two tight end personnel a lot anyway, and Evan Ingram can be looked at as the third wide receiver. So it's 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 Christian Kirk and it's Gabe Davis. That that's that's where it is, and Evan Ingram. That's three guys making over. I think the cheapest one in that whole deal is Gabe Davis. He 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 has an annual uh salary of about 13 million. Him and Ingram is about the same. You're not gonna keep getting a whole bunch of dudes averaging over 10 million dollars in your receiving core. That's just not gonna be the way it works. So I think it's possible that in a deep wide receiver draft and in a deep corner draft, the Jaguars start looking at guys like Jerry and Jones and start looking at guys like Renardo Green, where they, they can get them a little bit later. And then with the wide, wide receivers, they start looking at guys like, uh, I think Malachi Corley might be gone, but they can definitely start looking down the line at at, at some other guys, uh, Javon down at Central Florida, Ricky Pearsall, some other guys that they think might be there in <clears throat> on day two and really focus day one on best player available at maybe not a position of need, but a position where you will need him and you can create the need by drafting him and then deciding to move on uh, from Cam Robinson and save you a bunch of money. That's if you think you're going to get better. And I think the Jaguars believe that uh, – they are going to get better with that 17th pick. And if they pick a guy at 17, he's going to be ready to play just like Anton Harrison was ready to play last year. So do not rule out that if they're sitting there and there's a, a there's a candidate, whether you, regardless of who the player is that you like, and there's a bunch of other linemen that people love, uh, uh, Fashanu uh, is a good player. There, there are just so many uh I mentioned uh, Marius Mims already, who is really, really intriguing to me, man, because he's so big. And I just can't imagine having him bust that huddle every week looking at somebody saying, you ain't getting around me. So uh, he's another option. He's a, he's definitely another option. There's a way that the Jaguars could do something that's not real popular because it's something that fans aren't talking about. But it's easy to make sense out of it if they decide to move and go into this direction so i want you guys to think about the bookend theory as something that just might have some legs and and might end up occurring on draft day i tell you what locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on youtube and now it's available on amazon fire tv in the free fire tv channels app locked on sports today is here for you 24 7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league locked on sports today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. All right, you guys, man, make sure you have a great day. We'll continue to go over the possible scenarios that the Jaguars might take on uh, with the NFL draft. Any news that comes out via free agency, we'll make sure we hit you up. The Jaguars did bring in a kicker from Washington. We'll see what the terms is uh, from uh, what the terms are from that. Of course, that'll be an area they'll probably continue to look to upgrade as we continue to move forward towards training camp. All right, man, until next time, you guys take care, and thank you for joining me today on the Locked On Podcast Network.